This is just one of the tunnels that you have and lots and lots of racks I see. Yeah, we call these shelves. We've got 24 of these tunnels and they've each got 16 shelves in each. Um, this crop is about 27 days old, so it's actually on its second crop now. It's a six week cycle that we grow. Um, we take three crops off during that six weeks. So this is on its second crop now, about 27 days into the cycle, and we're actually harvesting this crop now. We'll harvest it over the next five days. So we're just constantly skimming over the crop, taking the biggest mushrooms off all the time and allowing the smaller mushrooms to grow on. Great, they all look different sizes. So what is the, the best size? Which one would you pick? I mean, is, is that the, the best size Well, right it now? depends what you're gonna do with it, to be honest. If you were going, if you wanted the mushroom, uh, to be presented on the plate and stay in the shape of a mushroom, then you'd buy a baby button, very small. Um, but if you're looking to make a recipe, you're making a sp spaghetti bolognese or something, you're going to chop the mushroom, then the bigger the better, because it's just easier to chop, that's all. Great. It's actually, it's quite um, cold in here. I thought it was going to be warm to sort of make them grow. Is this, is this well, how they like it? At the beginning of, of the process, when we put the compost onto the shelf, then the rooms are very humid and very warm, and that, that grows the root structure of the mushroom. But once the mushroom starts to grow on the bed and we can see them and they look the shape of mushrooms, then too much humidity uh, damages the mushroom. So we have to reduce the humidity in the room and we reduce the air temperature as well because we don't want to force them to grow. We want them to grow at their own natural pace. Fantastic. Come on, can I put my hands in there? Should we get our I hands can, stuck I, in? I'm I'll trying put, to feel it. Let me put my hands it's in. Actually, it looks like something from out of space because it's like mud or, or, or sort of peat, but then Loads of white stuff. I'll get a big, big load of white stuff. Oh yeah, you're stronger than me. Take a look at that. It's all white and gooey. And look what are these like little round dots on there as well, Mike. The little tiny things. Are they little mushrooms? They're actually little mushrooms, <gasps> but some, not all of them will grow. The mushroom um, will only grow as many mushrooms as it's got food for. So the little ones will die off and they'll never grow any bigger. But this one's alive. This one will grow still. And this is the peat that we grow them off. I was about to say, will it still grow now we picked it? Will it, <laughs> will it still grow? It, to an extent, yes, but the peat actually isn't the food for the mushroom. What's, what the food for the mushroom is, is underneath, and this is the compost. Wow. And the compost is made from wheat straw. Ooh, and that's okay. where all the food is for the mushroom. Okay. And is that what it, is it made of wheat and straw? Is that why it's called wheat straw? It's, uh, it's wheat straw and it's chicken litter, but it goes through a composting process and then it's pasteurised so that it's safe. So I'm all right. So <laughs> okay. it's, what, it's what we call a selective compost because, because we're growing a fungus, it's very easy to grow other funguses that we, we don't actually want to grow. Yeah. So we temperature treat the compost, which kills off all the microorganisms that the competitor funguses like to eat. Okay. But it leaves the, 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 the microorganisms that mushrooms like to very eat. Very clever, isn't it? Very clever. Sure and is. what's all this white stuff that comes down from the mushrooms? Well, that's actually the root system of, of the mushroom. It's called mycelium. And it's not like a normal plant root where each mushroom will have a, its own individual root. There's a massive root system underneath there and the mushrooms can feed from many different parts of the bed. So they're all connected? Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. So you did mention picking them. How, how do you go about picking these mushrooms? Is it done by hand or is there a machine? Or? It's all done by hand okay. because mushrooms bruise very easily. Um, we've, we have yet to invent a machine that can pick them. It's a selective process as well, so we can't just pick every mushroom. So it needs some intelligence to decide which mushroom to pick. But once it comes to picking them, they're very, very delicate and they bruise very easily. So a machine can't do it yet. We'll hope, okay. We hopefully one day they will <laughs> be able to. But the technique to pick them is, is just pull and twist, basically. So hold the mushroom, yeah. pull it up and twist at the same time. Oh, lovely. Very nice. And I guess, because they're very delicate, how do you make sure that you don't well, don't we, ha damage them. we have to be very careful when we're, when we're handling them. They can't pick them and trim the, trim the stalk off and then throw them in a punnet, otherwise yeah. it will bruise. So we have to place them in the punnet carefully. Really carefully. Absolutely. So it's a long process. Yep. And I guess if they're so delicate, you can't water them from above. We can't. We do water them from above. We've got a, we've got a watering system underneath the shelves. Okay. But we don't water the mushrooms once there are mushrooms on the bed. We only water the compost and the casing soil when there's no mushrooms there. Once there's mushrooms there, we have to stop watering because water damages the mushroom. Okay, so there's no other process for this now. It's not going to get warmer in here at any minute. This is, this is how they stay now until they're picked. This is how, the, uh, how it stays. We'll warm the room up slightly as we go through the process because the compost generates quite a lot of heat itself. Um, but that activity dies down as you go through the crop. So we'll just raise the air temperature to support the compost because they feed better at warmer temperatures. So compost temperatures above sort of 22 degrees C 
um, are great for feeding the mushrooms. Anything below that, and the mushroom doesn't feed that well. Great. So we, we manage the air temperature to manage that compost temperature to 22 degrees, basically. So how many people would be in here picking all these mushrooms, the mu like mushroom pickers? Well, in this room, um, over the next five days, we'll probably pick about six tonnes of mushrooms out wow. of this room. And each individual picker will pick, uh, and on, on average, at about 25 kilograms of mushrooms per hour. So at the beginning of the flush, we'd only have probably three or four people in. But